Hi and welcome to Daily Chess. Today I would like to um, yeah, share my thoughts with you on the Grandmaster Tournament in Dortmund, Germany. Um, yeah, this first round already saw three decisive games, which is quite a lot in today's uh, yeah, Grandmaster practice. Uh, Kramnik managed to play Wang Hao in an isolated queen pawn position, resulting from its Slav defense. You will also find this video later on my channel. Uh, second game which ended decisively was uh, George Meyer against Akadi Neidic, the uh, number one ranked player in Germany, as well as Fabio Caran who won with Black against uh, Andreiken. And yeah, those, okay, despite the other two draws, uh, you know, it, they were rather fighting. I mean, it was very fighting chess. And um, yeah, so I, I would say I don't. All the participants try to win, uh, not try to play the best. Uh, don't aim for dull draws or something like this. So even if the draws which were in, uh, which we saw in the in the first round were um, yeah quite a, no what was fighting chess. Let's let's put it like that. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, I would like to show you the game between Meyer and Neidich, which was a uh, very very good uh, position display by Meyer, who uh, outplayed him. And yeah, just let me sh uh, share my thoughts with you. So g4, knight f6, c4, g6. So already you know, showing that um, Arakadi wasn't for a draw. He wanted to play either King's Indian or the Queenfield Indian, and um, you know, to try to fight for his own. You know, try to outplay his uh, his uh, comrade. And after knight c3, d5, we have the basic position for the Greenfield Indian. And now uh, Meyer uh, chose an, a quite an interesting approach. Usually, you know, if you aim for this setup here, Bishop G7, and then Queen B3, we have this famous um, a Russian system, so so called Russian system on the board, uh, which is also, you know, despite the exchange variation, maybe the, the most popular choice by, by White. But there's also another interesting possibility which I didn't see for quite some time. Um, I think the last time I saw it was somewhere in my, my very first club, chess club. Um, someone brought a book by, I think, Taylor or something like this. Uh, I, th I think Taylor, um, who suggested to play Queen B3 immediately. And uh, this is quite an interesting choice because it, it puts immediate pressure on the, on, on the center without you know, allowing black to have one piece more developed. You know and. The fight in, uh, resulting now is, is quite complex, and um, to be honest, I, I would say it's even very, very pleasant to play for for White, and Black has, has some so, uh, has to solve some problems here, and after D takes C4, Queen takes C4, you know, in the spirit of a Russian system, um, Knightage deviated. I guess he was surprised by this choice. Um, at least, otherwise, I couldn't explain his later play, which was. Uh, yeah, which has had a flaw, you know, and I mean, okay, here the main move is bishop g7 after bishop f4, for example. Uh, there was a recent game bec between uh, Ryazantsev and Nepomniachtchi in Yekaterinburg 2013, uh, which ended in a draw, but uh, yeah, was was quite an entertaining game. But Knight just chose here bishop e6. Um, yeah, it's also in a way logical. I mean, of course, this pawn now is uh, no, cannot go to e5 to to conquer here um, white center, but he has an interesting possibility of sacrificing pawn c5, just with the aim of breaking this uh, d4 con uh, this, this central control here by white. And uh, by putting the pawn on uh, the bishop in front of the pawn, he tries to exert some peace pressure on the queen. And this point is yeah, okay. This 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 um, square on b7. It's always dangerous to um, to grab this pawn because. Black will certainly have a lead in development. I mean, right now, the only piece, let's say, White really has developed is the knight. I mean, the queen is more, I don't know, more like fuel to uh, the Black's development than a real developed piece. And I mean, here's knight and bishop developed. Bishop can go to g7 rather quickly. Knight c6 might come, or knight d7, depending on circumstances. And uh, yeah, Black is simply enjoying a lead in development, so you can even sacrifice a pawn and try to increase it. And um, also over the board without preparation, it's it's kind of dangerous to play like this. Queen b5 for okay. Kim, 
yeah, I think the only real ambitious choice. I mean, you know, hitting the uh, the king and the pawn on b7, bishop d7, and now queen b3. As I mentioned, the grabbing the pawn is dangerous. I mean, there was one game which uh, was yeah, finished rather quickly. I mean, a player rated almost 2,500 played bishop c6, which is in a way just bad because of the queen b3, queen takes d4, um, where white got the possibility to, to play similar to black by putting his bishop in front of his pawns, try, just try to increase the lead on development. Bishop e3, king the queen, knight e5, uh, queen e5, knight f3, queen a5, knight d4, you know, and now already starting to use this better developed pieces to create some imbalances to, yeah, just play for something. And after bishop g7, knight takes, knight takes, white enjoyed the bishop pair in a fairly open position, rather yeah, weak pawns which can attack and uh yeah in Polak Kaufmann in Olomouc nineteen ninety nine um yeah right one eventually but uh the correct way to play is knight c six here not simply trying to uh, to develop his pieces I mean he has three pieces developed the rook can go come into action the bishop goes to g seven puts pressure on this pawn you know white will always suddenly have to react somehow in order to avoid uh, immediate, immediate, an immediate disaster. And after e3, rook b8, queen a6, and knight b4, certainly the the most critical line. I mean, hitting the queen and threatening to fork here on c2, after which he would uh, simply win the rook, or let's say at best probably the, the exchange because the knight is trapped on a1. Um, I managed to find an interesting improvement which I like for, uh, for black. I think this gives him very, very good play. After queen e2, uh, as happened in the game Dobas Ladani in Budapest 1996, and um, this move here, c5, is, is quite interesting. Um, I mean, it just breaks up, uh, yeah, white center, and with some lines, you know, trying to create some targets here, after which you can, you know, Pressure it of bishop c6, for instance, you no know, hitting the pawn immediately. Bishop g7 comes, you know, maybe even doubling on, on the file here, and it's, it's very, very dangerous to play. I mean, you know, after this, even bishop f5 might come, and the threat of knight c2 or knight d3 even is, uh, yeah, quite, quite dangerous. And here, in the first example of knight f3, e c takes d4. In order to retake with the knight, it's very important. Um, Black de does get certain initiative and certain play for it after e5, for example, um, with the idea that uh, okay, if, if he goes back, uh, probably loses almost instantly. I mean, after knight uh, f3, e4, if he goes back, knight d3 might even come, and I mean, this knight is a powerhouse here. Uh, the king has to go, and I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think it's quite obvious that uh, this is very, very, very dangerous for him. I mean, um, yeah, I think Black's just totally dominating here. Um, instead of this, um, Maya played Queen B3, so not allowing all these uh, threats. I mean, I'm not sure if he. Okay, to be honest, okay, I, I cannot say if, if Knight was really surprised or if he had prepared this line, but I guess he was rather surprised because it's such a rare approach. Um, I must admit I didn't research if, if George Meyer um, did play this line recently. Unfortunately, I didn't check it. But um, if he didn't, uh, he yeah, and I just probably hadn't expected this. I mean, it's, it's really a rare approach, and probably just knew some 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 lines somewhere. You no, know, just you no know, due to study on, on the greenfield. But I think uh, he was almost out of book here. Okay, Queen B3. C5, as I mentioned, uh, trying to crush white central control, and this pawn will probably be just a target. I mean, it's it's unlikely that, that white will hold on this pawn. D takes C5, bishop C6, okay, increasing the pressure. pressure. Also planning knight BD7 and C5. And after knight F3, uh, three, knight BD7, knight D4, very, very strong. Um, yeah, in a way, it's just threatening to yeah, crush white's structure. After knight takes c5, um, the immediate take here is not possible due to knight takes b3, knight takes d8, and knight takes a1. 
and the knight can escape by knight c2 check and knight b4 or knight c6 for example and this knight here doesn't have many squares so probably if, uh, if it goes like this we already can escape here and white will always you know, have to cover some vulnerable squares here for instance f2 knight g4 might come and um, yeah it's, it's just quite annoying I mean black's just just totally winning here probably so queen c4 hitting the knight and uh, okay once this knight moves I don't know if it's okay here this is even you know, problematic because we just take uh, if he retakes the knight is hanging okay first check um, knight d7 otherwise the rook would be hanging and the knight xa6 would be totally winning and um, yeah, otherwise okay if he goes back to d7 um, yeah, we just exchange on c6 if the queen goes uh, to c7 in order to exploit this pin here, we just play knight. Yeah, let's say we could probably even. Maybe it's even possible to play knight b5 here. Knight a5 wouldn't be that good. Uh, because with the idea that if he takes, 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 knight c7 comes and white's winning. Let's see knight b5. The queen cannot go to a5 to check. She can go to she can go to b6, but after this, I mean, probably just knight cd4, and white's just just a piece up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't look convincing for black. So queen b6 came. Um. Okay. He took queen takes e6. Not already securing the bishop pair, and now a very very strong idea b4. Of course, now he's weakening some squares, especially this pawn. He might be potentially weak after a5 and so on because there's still a rook unprotected there. If the bishop is in p2, white is just much better. But um, without this, it's it's not that easy. And with b4, he exploits the fact that um, yeah, the queen yeah cannot really move because okay, the, the knight needs protection, and if the knight moves, he can take the queen, which is unprotected by the b pawn. And b takes c6 inflicts some damage to white stru uh, to black structure, and this pawn on c6 will be very very vulnerable. And um, actually, this is the first critical point because um, okay, this is also I think something that was never played before at a very new position, and uh, white simply enjoys a, s a slight edge. I mean, he has a bishop here, which is always a slight plus, especially in an open position like a greenfield. Um, and also, here's a, a simple way of exploiting these weaknesses. I mean, this pawn here on c6 is on the semi-open file, which means um, the rook will come very, very quickly to it. You can maybe even play bishop e3, you know, hitting this pawn, and then play rook a to c1, and so on. It's it's very dangerous, and black will always have to have to be conscious about some some tactical ideas by by white, and it's not at all easy to play here. I mean, okay. Let's say what which which counterplay does this black has. Um certainly this pawn here is vulnerable. Um maybe ideas such as a five might come into mind. After a five, um let's put it immediately let me see. Um here. Let's put it immediately. After a five for example. A three is not possible, we could just take, threaten the the knight. If he takes the rook would be hanging, so there's a pin on the A file. Therefore, um, yeah, he probably even has to go for rook B1 after takes takes. Okay, it's no both sides have some weaknesses, so White just enjoys this bishop pair, which is yeah, as, as a small plus, let's say. Um, yeah, so this or potential threat. Of course, on the other hand, um, I mean. White blacks also better develop right now. I mean, probably this won't last for long. I mean, white will certainly win time hitting his weaknesses here. Maybe even going for something like g3, bishop g2, and immediately hitting this pawn and eyeing the rook on a1, a8, and maybe even e3 is a possibility just to, to finish development and maybe put the bishop here on after e3, bishop e2, bishop f3, also on this long diagonal, which is an idea. And the bishop might come to b2 after a3 just to solidify his center here, as his, his uh, queen side. And um, yeah, if white manages to do this, he will most probably be much better. 
but uh, without this happening, um, black certainly has some counter chances. One of white's main ideas is that after a5, he can try b5. And if black gets rid of his weakness on c6 by exchanging it, the knight might come to b5 and already exerting some powerful pressure. And the bishop goes to, b, uh, to f4, also supporting the knight hop, and the rook might come to d1 to c1. So uh, once this happens, um, as you see in the lines, uh, white might convert his structural advantage into a um, yeah into a direct attack against the opponent's king and some important and weak squares here for instance c7. Okay, George Meyer played e3, which is okay, rather solid. Um, I thought that rook b1 was also quite interesting, um, which is again okay, that way an, a novelty even. Uh, for instance, after a5, uh, the idea I mentioned just now b5. Okay, for rook c8, I mean. Um, Taking is not very, very good. I mean, you will see this on some lines um, later on. But this is very, very dangerous for him. I mean, c7 is weak. So let's say rook c8, um, bishop d2 hitting the pawn on a5, pawn on a4, a5, and already you now renewing uh, this threat. And it's similar to a line we will look at later on. For instance, after knight d5 to protect it here, we can even go for e4, try to block this line here. And it's extremely dangerous um, to to play for um, for for black. So I think white enjoys a very 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 small and decent uh, yeah initiative and maybe a, a direct attack. So rook c8 uh, c8 comes g3 c takes b5 and knight takes b5 and as similar to the to the lines we we just looked and checked. Um, yeah, white gets certain pressure here. I mean bishop d2 comes. Uh, Black won't be able to finish his development, and uh, without this, he, he will just have uh, yeah a bad game. So let me see. But instead of rook b1, um, he yeah just played e3, which also not, just gives him a solid solid edge probably. I mean he enjoys the bishop pair, and this should yeah be of some worth at least. Um, Okay, now if a5, it's similar to the line we just uh, saw right now. So b5, c takes b, knight takes b, rook c8, bishop d2 hitting the pawn, a5, bishop a5, knight d5, rook d1 maybe even would be would be even stronger. After e6, then, then e4, uh, I mean, the rook is already on a d5, which is probably an improvement even. And after knight b5 uh, to b6, knight a7, and yeah, white's attack is almost is probably just crushing. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's difficult to see how, how black will survive this. And um yeah, therefore e six came. A three, okay, solidifying his center. And one of his plans is already no it's, it's already finished one of his plans. He's trying to catch up in development by bishop e two f three probably, or maybe even bishop a six, which is also quite interesting. And then try to play either bishop d two or bishop b two. And or to finish his development, connect his rooks, and uh, yeah, enjoy the plus of some oh no, of a slight positional pressure. Bishop g7, you know. Now something like knight e4 is threatening. So rook b1, knight b6, hitting for d5, and now a very very strong concept, bishop a6. Um, stop this clip maybe for a moment and try to see the idea behind um, bishop a6 because it's not obvious in the first uh, no, uh, at the first sight but it's very very instructive um, why bishop a6 is so important for white's whole plan stop this for a moment and uh, you know, gather some thoughts and then continue resume this clip and see the solution for it well the point being that what black is aiming for is to occupy the square d5. And um, what he would, in fact, what black wishes or desires is that white takes on d5. Because then he could take the c pawn and repair his structure. And once the c pawn is uh, takes, we takes, um, he will open up the c file. And now try to figure out how black. Um, 
should manage to occupy the c file with his rooks because c8 is controlled and that's the point uh, white simply no, converts one advantage a structural advantage into a yeah, pure positional advantage because um, the c file is completely in white's hand and as we will see in the game rook b8 mm -hmm. bishop d2 knight f to d5 bishop d2 is also interesting because now the d5 will be closed knight f to d5 and um, rook c1 was also interesting I, I looked at this line and with the idea just to you know, keep white's uh, initiative against this pawn there and after knight takes c3 takes and a mass exchange gave knight d5 I just collect a pawn therefore king d7 king e2 after knight d5 rook c5 and um, yeah white's also told in total control I mean he will play e4 f3 so limiting this knight here taking away this uh, very powerful outpost here and later on play rook f to uh, h to c1 and you know our rook cannot go to um, to c8 right now to defend it and uh, it's, it's very difficult. I mean, you can even play bishop c4, bishop b3, bishop a4, try to put pressure on this pawn here, which is an interesting maneuver. And uh, it will be very, very difficult for, for, for black to hold this game. Knight takes d5 is uh, yeah, the interesting line. I mean, if e takes d5, rook c1 just comes. And this pawn is, 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 is yeah, a liability. If c takes d5, the C file might have opened up, but white c black cannot really fight for it because C8 is not available. Otherwise, he would just, uh, yeah, sacrifice an exchange. But um, this would wouldn't solve his problems of of trying to fight for the C file. So King E2, Knight A4, okay. Rook H to C1. Um, an idea of playing something like bishop c3, you know, to win this pawn, does not work. So, for instance, yeah, probably after rook c2, maybe even rook c7. But let's say if he takes, let's just take it that way. He has a huge problem, uh, yeah, protecting those two pieces, and the white wins. King d7, okay. At least trying to, you know, stop some penetration here along the c file. Rook c2, simply doubling up. Rook b6, hitting the, pawn, uh, the bishop, b5. Rook h to b8, rook b to c1. And now already threatening uh, rook b to c, uh, rook um, c2 to c7, uh, winning at least one pawn, either f7 or a7. So bishop b5 comes. Um, yeah, fitting this, uh, filling this hole here on c7. f4, hitting the pawn, uh, the bishop. If the bishop moves, I don't know, to f6, rook comes to c7. Um, yeah, he cannot allow this. After bishop d6, also a very very strong and powerful concept, bishop b4. Um, <laughs> the idea is simply that if bishop takes b4, a takes b4, the structural weakness doesn't mean anything, uh, as we will see later on, because uh, c7 is of much more importance. I mean, this knight is completely out of play. Rook, the, the c file is in total control for and white, and yeah, white is just winning. I mean, you cannot. Black doesn't have any recon to play. You cannot even protect a7 properly. So king e8 came. Rook c7, also quite strong. If he takes that way, rook takes c7. Just you know, with also with ideas such as, yeah, rook e7 for example. Therefore, bishop takes b4, a takes b4, and the structure I just mentioned uh, some moves ago isn't that weak as it looks like. Knight b2. I'm trying to disturb the connection of the rooks by playing knight c4. Therefore, the rook increases its pressure. And okay, if if he exchanges it off, just c takes, a b takes c takes because if the rook takes, um, it's just over. He'll just play rook a7, and he has already some difficulties preventing, stopping, um, stopping white from playing this rook uh, b7 and uh, uh, c7 and c8. But I think maybe instead of rook takes a7, maybe this might be even stronger. Um, 
if we exchange off, you cannot prevent queening. But if if rook a4, this, this, and this looks also very very good. Yeah. Okay. If this rook six, now this maybe not even that good. Let me see. Rook b7, rook a4. Yeah. Okay. But this probably also loses just to bishop b5. I mean, c7 comes uh, at hempy, and um, both squares will be controlled, so you cannot even print, uh, stop c8. So, for example, if he moves, check, controlling the d8 square and d7 with the bishop, and uh, in order to, yeah, okay, probably has even has to sacrifice it. The rook takes b5, takes. In order to stop this, he has to play king d7, but after rook takes b2. Uh, the position is still lost for, for black. Okay, so knight c4. Uh, rook takes a7, okay, just not picking up the pawn. Knight d6. And I don't know how, uh, yeah, it's, I, I expect that, uh, I, I assume that um, both players were in certain time trouble, uh, or at least George Meyer, because his play from now on becomes, yeah, Faulty a bit. I mean, it's very, very big mistakes, and he almost spoils his whole advantage. I mean, for example, um, I mean, King d3 is just winning. I mean, Black is in total, you no, know, it's a total disaster. He cannot play anything. I mean, after Knight takes b5, for example, Bishop takes, Rook takes, Rook c to c7 now, Rook takes before Rook e7. Um, okay, King, king f8, I just pick up the f pawn. If Rook uh, King d8, Rook takes f7 anyway. And now just threatening to mate him with simple rook f8. If the king goes to e8, I just pick up the h pawn, for example, like this, and just threaten to mate him. And even this doesn't prevent. The, right? Okay, it does even, but he just has to sacrifice a rook, which is uh, yeah, also completely uh, yeah, undesirable. And otherwise, it's yeah. I mean, you cannot even prevent it anyways. The only idea is to check him here on b3, but um, the king will just run here, try to hide on d6, and if a rook checks here on um, on uh, b6, he will just attack the rook and still threaten mate, uh, win completely. For instance, king d4, rook h to b4, king e5, rook takes e3, otherwise uh, the rook is just safe, uh, the king is just safe there. Rook takes e3, king d6, rook b6, and king c5, attacking the rook, um, and threaten mate. So even if king e8 comes, we could just pick it up. And it's, it's completely over. I mean, yeah, there's not, enough, not much to play for here. I mean, he cannot even escape this mate, probably. I mean, even if he tries to run with this pawn, um, I don't see a way how, how he will try to solve his problems. I mean, for instance, rook b3. Uh, king c5, still threatening mate, so if I check, he just picks up the pawn, hitting the rook, and if the rook moves somewhere, it's just mate, and yeah. But okay, rook c to c7 immediately is not that good, I mean, this knight is still there and protecting some important squares, and therefore he should have just tried to improve his king. I mean, if the king goes here and to f6, and later on maybe to, even to g7, it's just over, otherwise Maybe even supporting here some actions on um, on the queen side. H5, G3, King F8. Just trying to improve his king here by means of G7 and F6. King D3, King G7, H3, and King F6. Black certainly has quite play. He simply got play. I mean, he he made a lot of improvements, and it's not easy now to yeah to to make so much progress for white. I think. I mean. This knight is, is is vital for for Black's defense, and I mean it, it's it's just very very unpleasant. And I mean, you know, if both sides approach time uh, again, come to time trouble and time pressure, um, and I'm sure George Meyer doesn't seem to be very stable there, and it's it's certainly difficult to um, how to say to to win a game a second time, and. Yeah, I think it's not very convincing what he what he did until now. But now knight also collapses uh, after g5. 
G5 is a bit over ambitious. I mean, he certainly felt that uh, White didn't have so much of an advantage anymore, but G5 just uh, spoils everything. After G takes H5, very strong. G takes F4, E takes F4. The structural weakness isn't as um, serious as it looks like. King G7. King, okay, King C3 is also not very good. Uh, just a wrong, wrong plan. Um, but as I mentioned, I, I'm not sure if time travel was was an issue here. I mean, it's the 39th move. Um, strong would have been rook c6. And tonight takes b5. Just go for a simple la line. Exploiting the pin. Going for this. h6, very strong. King g8 and rook f6, completely winning. And if the pawn's protected, if the rook checks, this pawn f will fall. Otherwise, f7 will fall. h7 will come. Rook h a a1. And uh, yeah, the game the game was just over. But King C3 gives white, Black some hope, but um, yeah, actually, my Knight also didn't manage to to make the most of it, out of it. The King H6, Rook C6, Knight B5. We go for a similar line. Takes E6. Go for this pawn here, but after Rook G7, threatening, mate. Rook H8, Rook D6. No, now the pressure of this pawn on this pawn is, is gone because the Rook needs to prevent. Mate was to stop mate. This pawn needs protection after rook g5. Um, yeah, the pawn will also probably fall after rook h5 to stop rook g5. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, seemingly stop to uh, rook h5. He plays it anyway. This is also very strong. This ensures a uh, yeah the the full point after rook takes g5. F takes king takes king b3. Trying to free this pawn so it can go. And after king f5, I mean, black's only hope. I mean, this rook is just for, you know, can only defend with this rook. His only real winning potential is this pawn here. And after king a4, rook b8, he just picks up the pawn. Lost his, you know, his remaining winning potential despite, okay, I don't think that white will, will get mated here. I mean, it would be just stupid, but um, he only has to defend, I mean, and two rooks, uh, two pawns down. It's it's very 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 dangerous. If, if uh, even if um, there is a rook end game here on the board, um, I guess it's it's not easy. And then king six, rook d three. No, simply having two purposes, or actually even maybe a third one. First of all, putting the ro uh, rook behind the passed pawn, protecting his other. Uh, let's say, yeah. This other um, winning resource because if black later on has to sacrifice the rook for this pawn, he will still have a uh, outside pass pawn which which is uh, enough to secure the win, and also to cut off here the rook on um, on the d file, rook a3, king b8, uh, king b3, rook b8, and just h4. And if the king goes th there. Um, he probably just improve his pieces, then play something like King C4, and so on. Maybe later on, just try to, um, yeah, to to um, let this let this pawn run down the board to B8 and Queen the pawn. After which, uh, Black will has to sacrifice his rook for his pawn, and yeah, with the rook and King, it's it's just an easy mate. You know, a few moves. Okay. Well, it was quite a lot. Um, I hope you enjoyed this commentary and my ideas here on, uh, on this very fascinating game. I mean, it's interesting to see how strong these grandmasters play positionally, but how easy they collapse in time trouble. It's also, it's, you know, time trouble brings the human aspect in every game, you know, to the surface, on the surface, and yeah, it's it's quite interesting. Also, not not just from a pure chess. From move perspective, but also from just psychology kind of uh, kind of um, perspective to to see how even very very strong improved um, tournament players. I mean, both players play for for the national teams. How um, they crumble bit, um, under uh, yeah, under time trouble and time pressure. Okay, if you have any thoughts, any lines, or any I don't know suggestions, maybe I missed something or. Yeah, mis-evaluated something and uh, just leave a comment on my channel here on YouTube Daily Chance TV and yeah if you have any thoughts something like this just leave a comment there and please don't forget to subscribe to it that would be the most important thing for me 
and otherwise uh, yeah I will yeah we will see us again with next game here of the Dortmund tournament in Germany bye